I'm sure some of you are thinking, why does this lady want to talk ab about algae? Ew. But I'm not talking about the pond scum that ruined your beautiful homemade pond. <coughs> and I'm not talking about that gross, ugly stuff that grew underneath your deck and rotted the wood. <coughs> nope, I want to talk about algae in the aquariums, specifically macro algaes. Because you see, when most people think about algae, even in the aquariums, they're thinking about the bad algae, the nuisance algae that plague their tanks and just take over and make everything miserable, cover their coral. It is gross. But what they're thinking of are microalgae. Microalgae are teeny tiny spores and types of algae that are so small you need a microscope to see them. Unfortunately, the little can chain together, link together, grow together, and they form into chained pieces that are your nuisance algae. Any dinoflagellates, diatoms, even cyano, which is actually a bacteria is equivalent to microalgae because they both produce their own food through either hydrogen production or photosynthesis. Macroalgae, on the other hand, are the large chlorophyll-containing, multicellular, most of the time, photosynthetic aquatic organisms that can be seen without a microscope. <laughs> We're not scientists here, so they're the big, pretty ones. They are very much like plants. In fact, they used to be deemed plants. Say what? Macros actually absorb nutrients through their cell wall, their cell membrane, versus stems and roots the way that plants do. So that's the only difference. That's why they were divided into a new category. We're not scientists. We don't really care about that. For our series, macros are the big, pretty ones, and the ones that benefit the tank, and we're going to tell you why.
in this series, we're going to cover anything and everything you could possibly want to know about macroalgae. In fact, if you have a question that I haven't covered at the end, I'll do a new video just for you. We're going to cover the three groupings of macroalgae. We're going to cover the lighting requirements for macroalgae, how they differ depending on what species you're trying to grow. The three best ways to use macros to help you within a saltwater tank. Which snails can be added to a macro tank that won't eat it. We'll cover which fish will eat your macros. We're going to cover the types that you want to avoid, how to use them to benefit your tank, which types grow faster than the rest, where to place them within the aquarium. We're going to cover everything that I've learned in the time that I've been keeping macros. So, there are multiple benefits to macroalgae. I mean, multiple. But, since we've decided that we're going to do a little bit shorter videos, we're going to do each segment based on the top three of whatever the title of the video is. So, let's get right to it and talk about the three top benefits to using macroalgae in a saltwater aquarium. Dun, dun, dun. All right. So, benefit number one is their ability to remove all of these things that you do not want from the water. I shouldn't say removes. Macroalgae can soak up ammonia, nitrate, phosphate, heavy metals, all sorts of things that you do not want by fixing to their tissue. As they grow, they soak up more and more and more of all that extra nasty stuff. And then when you trim them, it's like literally taking a fistful of all the nasty stuff in your tank and throwing it in the trash. Great feeling. <laughs> Amazing feeling. Let me tell you, if you've ever dealt with nuisance algae in the tank and you just absolutely hate it, you cannot imagine the pleasure knowing that you can literally take all of it in your hands and throw it away by trimming some macros. The bottom line is, with all of the extra organics in a closed system aquarium, you're going to grow something. So, earlier we discussed the difference between micro and macro algae. Micro are the small, teeny, tiny algae that you can't really see until it's too late and they form together and then they're all over everywhere and you can't get rid of them. Macros are the large pretty plant-like algae that can make your tank look even prettier or be kept in a sump out of the way. So, since the extra nutrients and organics are going to grow something, you get to choose. Do you want the nasty stuff on your glass and all over your rocks? Or do you want some pretty plants? I mean, seems pretty simple to me, right? The nutrients that the macros take up are still in the tank until you physically remove them or have something, some other method of nutrient removal. You still need a scammer. So if you've got your algae, munching, munch. I, I, I like the word eat, okay? I like to say eat. They really don't eat. I have to keep saying that because somebody makes fun of me. But anyways, if, if you've got your macros, taking up, trimming it, tossing it, and then your skimmer will take up your organic phosphate. two is that macroalgae just help the overall water quality. They actually go through two, they actually have two processes that they go through. 
The first, of course, is photosynthesis. And through photosynthesis, the macros use carbon dioxide and the light to turn the light's energy into chemical energy, which they store as sugar. That's what nourishes them and helps them grow in addition to the nutrients. Making up the initial level of the aquatic food chain, many other organisms rely on algae to provide nourishment. Without algae or bacteria plankton, the entire ecosystem would fail. That's because organisms able to perform photosynthesis can fix an inorganic carbon source like carbon dioxide into an organic carbon source that others can use and offer oxygen as a byproduct. This is why algae are labeled autotrophs, or producers, who can make their own food, whereas fish and other organisms are heterotrophs who have to rely on the autotrophs for nutrition and even oxygen. So literally, when the lights are on, they're photosynthesizing, is that a word? They're going, they're going through photosynthesis, and they're using carbon dioxide, giving off oxygen, and then when the lights go off, they go through respiration in which they give off carbon dioxide and take up oxygen. Now none of these shifts are big enough to hurt anything, but it is very good that during the day when the fish are awake and need the oxygen the most, the plants are providing it. At night when the fish are asleep and not breathing as heavily, the plants go through respiration. So it doesn't affect the fish. It does affect the, the pH a little bit, and we're going to talk in the next video how using plants in a reverse light cycle can not only fix any issue that might be caused by respiration, but also keep your pH so stable, keep your pH Keep your pH so stable, it'd be like, I don't know, what's a good metaphor? It'd be like bouncing a ball off wood. It'd be like, what's stable? It'd be like, uh... hard time deciding what the third most important benefit would be because there are so many important benefits to macroalgae but what I decided on since this is a seahorse channel is that macroalgae are the absolute perfect place for pods and these pods will grow in the macros whether you've got them in the tank or the sump and they become a food source to the seahorses in a reef the algaes can actually become a food source, but stick into the subject. Urgh. Stick into the subject. The third benefit is that macros, scrubbers, sumps, refugiums are perfect places for pods to grow and repopulate and populate the area. And I can't think of the right word, but I'm trying to get it. So, so number three is becoming a food source to the fish, seahorses, or whatever. It's a, macroalgae are a perfect place for pods to grow, and the actual macros can become a food source to fish. This is Mojo. Mojo gets a close-up in my video because he is the most awesome fish ever. But what Mojo is showing us today is how much he enjoys his nori. Nori is, of course, seaweed, which is algae. Many people will actually grow macros just to feed to fish. I'm thinking he enjoys it. Thank you so much for watching my video. Make sure you subscribe and if you click the notification button, you will not miss the next episode in the macro series. Actually, I'm not even gonna tell you because you need to click the subscription and you need to click the notifications and it'll be a surprise.
It's gonna be good though, I promise. You're making me crazy going. <laughs> I can't post that. No, I can't post that. Like plants. Stop it. And that's a big problem because we cannot test for organic fossil. So, some people have macroalgae in their tank and they will test for phosphate and get a zero reading and think that they are doing splendidly. They're not. It's just bound up within the macros and or in the tank as organic phosphate. I might have to edit all this shit, but I'm trying here. <laughs> Benefit number one. It removes... <laughs> As the macro grows, as long as you give it the right like I'm sorry. As the mac as the mac the mac wait, as the macro grows, since we're not scientists, we can't understand all of the complex I can't think of the word even. Um, 